Soul. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Guitar Souls podcast. This is episode number 115, I believe, and I am one of your hosts, Mr. Levi Clay, and I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Mike McLaughlin. How's it going, bud? I'm not too bad, handsome. How are you? Good. We've uh, we've got an additional light on on us now. We're backlighting the the room so it can look. Hopefully, it looks even better. You can get a shot of those beautiful guitars behind us, which is uh, which is nice. Yeah. I thought it was going to make it sound better on SoundCloud. Uh, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But yeah, I'm okay, thank you. Other than this, it's not very cold. How are you? Yeah, I. Uh, I so, you, Mike, have a, you have a story of inconvenience that you haven't told me yet. Exactly. And you know I love drama. So exactly. Hurry up. So I wouldn't really call this drama, right? So uh, last night <clears throat> I went to sleep. Me and Melissa put music on when we uh, when we go to bed, and I had some uh, Borelli La Reine on, and it was good fun. And I fell asleep, and like an hour or so later, I woke up, and the music was off, and the fan was off, and I was like, "Oh, the album must have finished, and Melissa must have turned the fan off." And then I look at the TV. And the light at the bottom of it was off, and I was like, "Oh, we mm. lost power." So I go to turn my uh, my bedside light on, and yeah, no power. I'm like, "Fantastic." Okay, cool. I'll go down to the fuse box and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I wander downstairs to the fuse box, and I look at. It, I'm like, oh, "Okay, the mains fuse is gone. Full, cool, no problem." So flick it immediately, flicks off. I'm like, "Fools!" <laughs> flick it, flicks off. Do that three or four times. I'm like, "Fantastic." How am I going to diagnose this at two o'clock in the morning with no lights? Um, what a bastard! So, you know, I thought for a second, I was like, okay, well, surely if I just turn all of the fuses for all of the individual circuits off, I can isolate and work out where the problem is. Yes. Cool. So I did that. Where was the problem? The very last switch. The studio. Oh, that's not good. The studio, yeah. Any idea what it is? So, so, well, I do now. Something was short circuit in the studio. And the, the reason I say this was a stress is because, well, I'm trying to sort this out at two o'clock in the morning, running back from the house to the studio, back and forward, in my pants, no less, running around in my underwear. You didn't um, even form it, you came down and look. I mean, it was two in the morning. So? No one, no one needs to do that. Um, I'm not talking about the electricity. <laughs> I knew I'd get it solved. Um, I sent uh, Darren Watson, friend of the show, a message because he's an electrician. He did the electrics in here mm-hmm. um, with, like, mate. I'm going to go to sleep now because I can't solve this, but any tips on what I should be looking for, how I can work this out? Uh, because, you know, it could, could be the PC, could be we've got new lights in it, could have been that that was causing the causing the trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I came out here today, turned everything off, and then just one at a time was just turning on plug sockets until I worked out what it was. And what was it? Air conditioning. Air conditioning, yeah. Which is a sensible, well, not sensible, but it makes sense, of course, because there's electrics for that outside. Yeah. So there must be some sort of fault with the electrics outside, which is... um. But, you know, the fear was that I was going to wake up today and not be able to solve this problem. And then I've got to a podcast and I could only mess around with it for about an hour because Melissa had to teach in the house. So I couldn't be tripping the circuits and losing the Internet. So that was how my day started. It was extremely stressful. But here we are. Here we are. It worked. So anything to report on your side of things? Not exciting. Uh, Oh, well, there is that. I was (laughs) going to tease that out. But yes, um, my amplifier is on its way back from Daniel, so it should be here at some point next week, which I'm super excited about. And I also decided that I need to get a new cab. So I went for a quick look, literally just to nosy, and within a couple of phone calls, I had accidentally ordered myself a new cab. Um, I say accidentally, no, I'm totally happy with it. I got it for a fucking song and a dance. So I've ordered myself a Marshall, not a 1960, don't want to hear any complaints over here, <laughs> but a... Uh, MF 400, the Mode 4 cab. I'm so disappointed that you didn't say an MG. <laughs> <laughs> an MG 4x12, but it's actually the 4x10 number. <laughs> uh, no, I got an oversized Mode 4 400, and that comes as stock with Celestian K100s. Um, supposedly, as an absolute monster of a cab. Sure. And I thought, I've already got a cab with E30s. If I can get something with different speakers in it, even if I swap them over and put an X part on each cab yeah. or whatever, then I'll have some interesting variants. Oh, that's cool. Next week. Amp back, new cab, ready to make a racket. And the tone is coming uh, because you not only have new amps, new cabs, but here you've got new picks as well. I have. I have <laughs> some beautiful new plectrums. Do you have any to, hand? to V-Picks and Levi, the handsome bastard that he is hooking me up. Yeah, we got uh, some, uh, some two, support yeah. from our friends. And I can. it's always been my friends. And we're very uh, you know, conscious about this on the podcast. We don't, any, any companies that help me out or do things with me aren't doing things for the podcast. Because the podcast is Mike's as well as mine. So if it's not benefiting Mike, it's not a podcast thing. So I've never mentioned VPix on the podcast before. But uh, I've been playing VPix for, you know, over 10 years now. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I absolutely love them. And I've obviously given Mike a bunch to try. And you like the Dimension 3.0? I do. The Dimension and Dimension Junior. Yeah. And yeah, Bunny was so kind to send me a couple, actually. And these are beautiful. That's the first thing that I noticed was just how beautiful they are. Sure, sure. 
I know that sounds really, I don't know, um, stupid, but yeah, really, they're, they're something else, man. It's one of those things, isn't it? Though, because uh, I was um, I was a friend and student, ex student of mine, Michael. Uh, we were talking about picks just recently because I posted uh, that Vinny had sent me a bunch more picks, uh, and he looked at them and checked out the price, and he was like, "Dude, I'm not paying five bucks for a pick. So I'm just not doing it." And I was like. How much do you spend on a pair of strings that sit on your guitar for for two months or whatever, you know? And you won't spend four bucks, five bucks on a pick that should last you a year. Come on. We spend so much money on our instruments, every single aspect of our instruments, and yet we won't spend any money on the thing that strikes the fucking string. Like it's such an important part of the of the. I'm not going to say the tone, the, the the tone of playing the guitar, but the physicality of playing the guitar. Yeah. You know, okay. different pick shapes. Aye change the way you play i think it's maybe just a dangerous rabbit hole to fall down yeah. especially when if anybody is in the same frame of mind thinking for me like a fiver's not a lot of money to spend on a pick if you're getting something that'll last you as yeah. you're saying it's something beautiful but uh material and it'll last and it's well made and it looks good but you also have the other side of that expensive plectrum thing which is like the huffschmidt stuff oh yeah like, yeah do you want to spend ninety five thousand yeah. pounds on this aeronautical grade plastic five mil wedge that you would could... you like me to get some out of my pick box? No, <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, Each to their own. Not for me. You're totally right. Um, you know the reason I play the medium pointed is because for me it felt like the most cost effective pick that Vinny makes. I don't get me wrong. I love the way it feels, but yeah, it's too Scotsman yeah, Levi. Yeah, all about money. It's cheaper than the dimensions. I think the dimension uh -huh. is a better pick. Uh huh. But the dimension has one point on it, and that point files to a bevel, right? A fine, a fine bevel. So it will wear down faster than these do. So these last even longer, and you know, one point is going to last longer than the dimension. And I've got three points on these, so I, I absolutely love these. Um, but if I was playing the dimensions, and don't obviously I've got a ton of them, um, you do have to change your mindset of of how flippant you are with picks. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're playing picks that are twenty p, like sure you lose them all the time and that's just nature of the beast your mindset changes when you have a decent pick an expensive mm -hmm. pick um you know a lot of people have like a pick pouch that their pick goes in because of of course and in the grand scheme of things not really expensive compared to like as you mentioned the huffman stuff but you've got like the red bear were really popular when guthrie was promoting the red bear stuff like a decade ago i don't think i saw their stuff the blue chip picks there's there's tons of like really nice high-end picks out there that are crafted with mock picks jumps to mind mock picks yeah there's tons of great uh, plectrum manufacturers out there and sure while there's profit to be made it's i'm just going to say this to you guys now take a little bit more thought into the pick that you're using and make sure that you've tried a lot of different picks and that doesn't mean make sure that you've tried a lot of picks and spent a lot of money because you don't need to like this is um an only ball prodigy and i mean i was a little bit annoyed when these came out because these are functionally the v-pick <laughs> Um, the material is a little bit different, but they they do a smaller one that's the same thickness as this. Okay. And I was like, I was like, oh, a bit cheeky. Um, you know, try try a pick, try different picks because the angle, the the uh, the edge, the point of the pick, the bevel on the side of the pick, all of these things impact how you pick the string. And we know this to be true. If you're say a jazz three player, you played a jazz three for years, and then I say, okay, cool, show me your Eric Johnson licks, and you play them, and I'm like, fantastic. Here you go. Now play the same licks for me. I'm gonna have you use a penny to play with. You know, totally the, the old Brian May. It's not even just the sound; like the ability to do it changes because the edge of the pick is so different. Um, so you need to, yeah, you want consistency in the pick that you're using, and yeah, less product placement and more just talking about cool stuff. Totally, man. You should definitely try as many different platforms as you can. I've learned over the last year, yeah. and even I'm still learning. That's kind of a big part of why I bought a new cab. Because the, sure. the more I've been fucking around with tone and whatever else, and being happy, but trying to get just you know that quest for tone that's yeah. never satiated. <laughs> yeah. It's like mm, right. Yeah. Let's just be realistic here. The most, the most important part of this signal chain is where it comes out. Mm. You could have all the best gear in the world, and if you've got a shit cab or shit speakers, you're not going to get the sound you want. Yeah, I've been finding that the cab I've got just now doesn't sound bad, but it's not giving me the same rounded warmth that I sure. want. It's just it's almost in a good way. It's quite shrill, but it mm. means it's missing quite a lot of punch. Yeah, and I feel as if the stuff that I'm playing at the moment, it's a great cab for playing metal leads, but the rhythm stuff doesn't cut through as well as it could i'm gonna throw the and it's not a, a criticism of what you said there but it's uh and i don't even think it's an oversight so you know this obviously um that's all well and good but unless you're taking your cab out on the road with you <laughs> oh but it's just as much for me to hear better sure. in practice as well yeah 
Sure. You're going to have a beautiful tone at home and then you go out on the road and just be like, oh, sweet, I've got a, I've got an MG cab tonight. Fantastic. Wouldn't be the first time, certainly <laughs> won't be the last. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else. Of course, there. You know, y'all know what I'm going to do at this stage. Did you know? This show is brought to you by our friends over at Ormsby Guitars. We want to remind you guys that there is still time to get involved in the upcoming Run 16 guitars. Those include these incredible hypes available in five new colours. That Dragon Burst is absolutely stunning. You can also get your hands on one of the Metal X's, again available in a range of finishes. My personal pick has to be these headless Vs. Absolutely outrageously cool. Imagine one of those in an 8-string. I absolutely love these. And finally, the Ando San Signature model, available in 6, 7, and 8-string availability. Go and check them out at Ormsby's website right now. This show is also brought to you by our friends over at Rev Amplification, a one-stop shop for all of your tonal needs. Head on over to their website to check out their range of lunchbox amplifiers, both the D20 and G20, 20-watt 20 amplifiers with built-in two-notes torpedo technology so you can record direct into your computer. If that doesn't suit, you can also check out one of their highly popular G2, 3, and 4 pedals, giving you that trademark Rev tone in a stomp box. Incredible tones, I use these myself. And finally, you may notice in the back of these videos, a Rev Generator 120, an absolute masterclass in modern electric guitar tones. Check it out at their site now. So as always, a huge thanks to our friends over at both Ormsby Guitars and Rev Amplification. You can see some of them on the wall there. You can see some amps behind us. We love the products, go check them out. And of course, thank you to Vivi Picks as well. Go check them out, good people. Thanks Vinny, thanks Derek, thanks Perry. You guys are awesome. Uh, speaking of uh, the Rev stuff, we mm -hmm. are, after this show, we're going to film a bonus episode for our supporters over on Buy Me A Coffee, link in the description. And the bonus episode that we're going to do this month is, of course, we've got these the Rev G20s. We're going to load up the G20s. We're going to put them on this um, cabinet over here. Um, we're going to film us really testing them, trying them out, seeing what sounds we can get, because you've used them direct into a computer i've not actually done that yet because of course i've got my cab here so i just plug it mm -hmm. into that and do that so i'm interested to see how that side of things works i didn't even have it plugged into my interface i had my headphones into it in load box right. mode and then fucked with the usb settings so okay. like, and even that it's just it's phenomenal because you're yeah. like i don't like those cab sounds click right cool change that microphone sure. move that one about oh sure. that sounds quite cool store yeah <laughs> it's, it's mad uh, i'm looking forward to seeing how that um how all that functionality works and i'm sure you guys uh, are going to be interested in how cool these amps sound you can now hear, hear that. that, yeah, yeah. You can kind of miss that. Yeah. Go on, so play. This is flubby low end, and then tighten it up with the pedal. Can I hear the overtones of the, the, the really low end they're trying to come in? But I think it makes a difference that that uh, EQ is on. And of course, you want to support the show. So head on over to buymeacoffee.com, support the show, get some cool stuff in return. It'll be three bonus episodes now. Mm -hmm. Go on there and give us a dollar and you can get three bonus episodes. That's great value for money. Not bad, not bad. Can't say better value than that. One buck. Yeah. So um, shall we read a couple of bits of fan mail? We certainly shall. Um, my apologies to everyone. Not only am I not feeling too well, it is incredibly warm in Scotland the last couple of weeks. It has been insane, hasn't it? And today the humidity, mm. as we call it, it's clammy. <laughs> the humidity is very high. The moisture in the air is not good for me. As you can see, I am already sweating profusely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I don't cope well in the heat. I was built for the winter. <laughs> Both in frame and in heat. You, you mean you were built for Scotland? Aye, pretty much. <laughs> um, okay, so we just got uh, an email from Robin. This was a follow-up to our conversation on scalping. Uh, that was an interesting one, actually, that conversation. I, I did put up a um, a poll while we were doing the show. And the question was, so what do we think of Ross? And I wanted to go, initially I wrote, good guy or bad guy. And really, in the grand scheme of things, no one's going to look at that and go, good guy. But a better question felt like, bad guy or I don't really care type thing. Okay. And 87% of people went for don't really care. So. Fair enough. I mean, it's such a specific pedal mm. to be chasing after that absolutely I, like the majority of people probably won't care. It's the people who either collect the Waza stuff or really wanted a tone bender sure. of that that will be pissed off. Yeah. Or, which is probably more accurate considering the comments we saw when we were talking about it, people that wanted to do the same thing yeah. didn't have the opportunity <laughs> and are now like, no, I wanted to do that. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the same, almost the same argument as you see um, when you're uh, looking at the, the same arguments for... Sorry, my brain went totally blank there. Absolutely. Oh, well, let's read this bit of fan mail. <laughs> Soz. <laughs> we, I'm not, I don't deal well in the heat. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, love the show. Keep going with it. Just wanted to weigh in on the boss tone bender discussion. Scalping, whether it's concert tickets or whatever, or guitars, etc., has a specific component, which is the scalper is buying up multiple units of something in order to push the price up and then gain when they sell. Like people who go online and buy 50 tickets for Radiohead, then wait a week and start selling them at massively inflated prices. Um, a massively inflated price that they have created by making something more scarce than it would have been otherwise. If you happen to buy a tone bender and then think, oh, look at that price, that's silly, I'd better sell it to get some money, that's totally okay, because your actions haven't artificially pushed the price up. Like, for example, I bought a high-end Fender guitar at the beginning of 2019, and now it's worth almost double that on Reverb. I'm not selling my Jazz Master, by the way, and <laughs> neither you should. <laughs> uh, but the market movement is not of my doing. If I needed the money, I would be mental not to take the current market price. The iconic example of scalping of recent years is people buying up life-saving drugs in order to artificially create a, a scarcity and then sell them on at crazy prices because people need them to survive, like Martin Schleckley did, which I don't think anyone could defend. Anyways, keep up the great work. Robin, from Bruno in the Czech Republic. Hi doing? Robin, thanks very much. And I, I definitely don't agree with people hoarding medicine. I think uh, insulin's a big problem in the States. Sure. Around the world in general, there's no way it should cost what it costs, but... Yeah. You're right. I don't think we can say that Rass is a scalper if this is the definition we're going with. He's well, not bought many of them. But, so, I agree with Robin in his point, but I also maybe don't think that his assessment of the situation is quite right. They're so limited edition Exactly, as there's only 300 of them. 3,000, is it not? Or maybe 3,000. Mm -hmm. I, I know someone who has one. Not just Rass. Oh, okay. But they're not saying <laughs> on it. Um, but yeah, so... If there's only only th let's say three thousand of them, I guess buying one of them isn't isn't making a, a huge uh, inflation in the value of the product. But I guess it dep also depends who's buying them. If you bought one of them with the intention of selling it on, but you did that knowing that two thousand of the others are also going to be bought with by someone with the intention of selling on, then you are contributing to the pushing the price up. I would I would argue. Um, yeah, if, if you're buying it for a blatant flip, then I okay, fair enough. I, yeah. I think that's. Not quite the same as buying all of them to artificially drive the price because you then actually control all of the supply as well as the demand. This actually reminds me. I do a big smile when you say when you say that, right? So what did we talk about last last episode? What was my example of scalping that I took issue with? Pass. PlayStation 5. Oh, yes, okay. Bought one off a scalper. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did. You're fucking joking. <laughs> I did. I wasn't waiting a year. I wasn't it wasn't waiting. Christopher Ward, was it? Uh, no, no, it was a guy, guy in Glasgow. Guy in Glasgow. Right. He was at 50 quid over retail price, right? In the grand scheme, of, compared to what some people are charging for them. Um, I think that's the important thing. Like, I, uh, Part of me feels like a hypocrite when I say that because I said that people can do this when, when people just crack and they and they don't, uh, don't toe the line and, and just say, no, no, we'll pay um, retail price. But I think that's why I got it just over 50 quid over retail, right? Because people aren't buying them for the scalpers' prices where they're trying to get 580, 650 quid. I remember seeing them for 800 quid. Yep. When they first came out, they were going for 900. I saw yeah. people try to sell them for 900. Yeah. And I got a brand new one in, in box, never opened um, the disc one for 500 quid, which is, um, you know, it's a little bit over, over retail. But point is, honestly, I had a conversation with the guy and while he was making a bit of profit on it, I, I wasn't angry at him. You know, I was mm -hmm. having a conversation with him in, in person and uh, I even jokingly said, like, are you supposed to say things like this to a scalper? And then I, I was like, but uh, it's, a, it's such a complicated one. It really is a really is a complicated one. But um, yeah, I revoke your <laughs> Scottishness compliment that I gave you. <laughs> it's funny because that that Scottish compliment that, that you, you reference can be used as both a compliment and an insult. Just about everything in Scotland can be done that way, <laughs> including our favourite word, cunt. Yep. Um, okay, so speaking of cunts, let's. Uh, oh. no, that's, that's not strictly true at all. Hey, someone getting a new guitar and they're not a they're not a cunt. Come on. <laughs> uh, I'm jealous to be fair. Yep. So Joshua Mitchnick sent us a message saying, "Hello, boys. This week I finally received my first custom guitar, which has been at the top of my wish list for uh, wish list for the longest time. An Aristides zero seven zero. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I love it to bits, but I do notice when other people have told me before I got it." And that she can definitely tell it's not when playing through a clean amp, i.e. my buddy's Fender Twin. 
It's not to say it sounds shit, because it absolutely does not, but it's definitely different, especially on split coils. I figured I'd ask you guys your opinions on these guitars or non-wood guitars in general. Personally, I think the fact that it's almost immune to weather changes almost nullifies whatever gripes I have about the slight change in tone. And like everything else, gear related, it's not like I'm going to lose points for having one or not having the other at a gig. Uh, thoughts? And yeah, I know it's not an Ormsby. The Ando San is next on the list. Happy playing, boys. Josh. Mate, that is gorgeous. And no wonder you're going for the Ando San. It's actually not too far different. That's lovely. Um, My brother's got an Aristides. He's got a Not 60, I believe. And a Kraken guitar. Incredible. I'm not too big on the Fishman pickups. Sure. I think Josh has got the same. Don't really my cuppa, but I totally get where you're coming from with the the difference in tone. I think it sounds a bit more hi-fi. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like sure. The, especially on the clean channel, it's a bit more, um, I don't want to say hollow, but it doesn't have the same characteristics that you get from wood where there's like a bit more resonance and a bit, I, 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 I don't know how to describe it without sounding like a pretentious wank. Sure. It's really hard. Like, I think we... Most electrics and solid body electrics, at least when you're running uh, through like a clean amp and a super clean setting, you can get the chiming is for the pickups and the electrics, but you also still get some of the body and the resonance from right. the wood. Yeah. I assume it would be the fact that the body is solid. Um, with the Aristides, I've only played the Keyrams a few times. Through even like the modelers on the clean channels, it sounds super, super hi fi. Like it's not flat, but it doesn't have the same kind of response as a guitar does. I've a, often a, a kind guitar. of speculated that the reason for that is that, you know, sound is a vibration. And I, I'm not going to go all, all poncy about this and be like, you know, oh, the earth is all energy, the, the universe is energy. No, I I'm not going that route. Let's just be scientific about this. Even our fart is 432 <laughs> hertz. <laughs> Strings vibrate, right? Of course they do. And then the pickup picks up the, the sound of the, that string vibration. Now, anything that contributes to that string uh strings vibration um is going to impact the, the the sound of that string sustain and just how that string is going to vibrate mm -hmm. um and i've always kind of theorized that you know if you had a guitar that was made out of sponge <laughs> that's gonna the, the it's going to absorb a lot more of that vibration than a than a guitar that was made out of a solid piece of lead mm -hmm. right so my theory with something like this is because it's a harder material it's a much much harder material mm -hmm. it won't be absorbing nearly as much of that string vibration the mm -hmm. initial after the initial attack of the string um so i kind of theorize hypothesize i guess would be the right way of looking at that it, that it won't immediately lose a lot of that high end um it's like a positive sympathetic resonance sure does that make sense yeah, yeah. Like, it goes with the string rather than it deadening the string. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Nice. That's, uh, you know, there's no science behind that, but that kind of, like, makes a little bit of sense to me. Aye. Um, yeah, so I played... I've only played one, maybe two of these. Uh, I played them in an interesting place, right? So we got these in a Guitar Interactive magazine, and we got them in a really interesting time. We got them in before they were metal guitars. We got them in before they were popular on the gent scene, right? Mm -hmm. So the guitar they sent us was a three single coil it was uh it was like a gold top um it, you know, it was their, their material but it was gold so it was imitating the look of gold top type thing mm -hmm. um and my understanding from the marketing stuff that we've been sent by them was that they were trying to pitch it to like your blues lawyers that wanted to have some technology behind what they were doing you know selling so, some cool technology kind of truthfully then yeah yeah that's that's a really good uh analogy that's kind of how i pitched uh, how it made sense to me I played Art it Deco Boutique. <laughs> yeah. I played it and just thought it was, you know, f fine but wasn't wasn't really for me. And mm -hmm. that opinion has never really changed. Um really? Yeah, they're not they're not for me. That's fair enough. Can but generally that. speaking I like classic guitars, you know, Telecaster guy. Um uh I've obviously got some modern guitars. Um and yeah, these guys are doing the modern thing. I mean, I kind of like the the headless that they have released, which obviously, uh, in terms of body shape, is very similar to the uh, to the Ormsby, very similar to the the Strandberg. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I know some of the guys that work over there, and uh, I I like what they're doing, and I love that people love their guitars. That's that's, that's all cool. that really matters, right? Come in some ridiculous finishes. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna gonna shit all over them. The thing for me is like, I like fancy woods and things like that. Mm -hmm. I like a flame maple top. Um, I like a Buckeye Bell, and you know I I like these finishes. Uh, I don't like them natural wood. I like them to be stained, but you know, we all, a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We all have our tastes, and um, yeah, uh, respect to these guys, but they're not for me. But I'm glad that you enjoy your guitar. So. Yes, thank you. Have yeah. you tried any other kind of wood alternative guitars? 
Like, do you remember the Switch Vibracell? No. Look up the Switch Vibracell guitar. We had one of these when I worked in Magnum Sound years ago. Right? And it's just, it was like a weird plastic polymer body. The yellow one. That's exactly the one we had in the shop. It is. Now it is, for, it is it's, it's ghastly, but it was such a quirky wee guitar, it actually sounded pretty cool, it was loud acoustically. Right. And it was like, I don't know if it's moulded plastic or something, it's really weird. Go for a wee read, let's see what they say. Um, Fibre is a patented process completely moulding both electric and bass guitars, including the neck and headstock, from the patented switch Fibre Cell material, creating an instrument with precise harmonic resonance and sound frequency vibe. I hate stuff like this because it, you know, I'm so, I'm so cynical whenever it comes to marketing speak. I'm like, you know, you'd say absolutely anything in order to sell this to me. That's that's how this stuff works. Of course, but it wasn't so much I was saying. Read the sure. the blurb because it's so believable. I just mean <laughs> another example of weird guitars. Yeah, like like it's the same idea but a different uh, application of the process. Yeah, but I remember having one of these, as I say, in Magnum Sound, and it being a very strange guitar to play, but interesting. And that's why I liked it. But I I don't know why I liked it. It's such an... I, I don't know. Ugly guitar. <laughs> it really is. It's fucking... It's disgusting. It is. I mean, to be honest, it sounds like they they have this, the exact same thing going on as Aristides do. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the, the concept. You know, take a, a material, mould a guitar out of it, make sure the material is consistent and can remove all of the inconsistencies that you're going to get from uh, from from using using wood. Um, that's it but, you know I like some of those wood inconsistencies so. well that's part of the character <laughs> isn't it yeah shall we talk about some stories then yes baby let's do it let's start out just by mentioning uh, this album upcoming album uh, it's by uh, Any uh, Anywhere Door mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of the guys involved on this I just wanted to make a brief mention to it uh, Chris uh, Chris Kleihout kind of put a lot of this together or put all of it together and um, asked me to check it out. And generally speaking, I have a rule. Like I have, I did have someone ask. They sent me an album just recently. They're like, you know, could you check this out and maybe review it? And I was like, I don't do album reviews because you're just opening the door to <laughs> uh, of the floodgates of, of albums getting sent to you, and there's just no time. Um, but, but what I can say to you is, if there is an album that features Bumblefoot, Pear Nielsen, Matthias Eklund, Guthrie Govan, Jack Gardner, Mika Tiska, uh, Jen Margera. Max Ostro. I don't know who Chris then is. Chris is from Valdania and plays in a... No idea. Salvig. He's an Ormsby artist. Okay. You don't know Chris now? No, I don't know Chris. Good player. Yeah. He a really I mean, good player. he's in good company here so that I will make the assumption that everybody in here is going to be a good player. Yep. And uh, and Jake Wilson. Um, there is one one track, the the Bumblefoot track, uh, which I guess I can press, press play on. This will be a public track at this point so we can um, we can share info on it. I won't play the whole thing, but just give you an idea. The the concept is, is I'm not going to lie, it's a strange album. It's like an electronic album that Chris wrote that he then added, um, brought the guys in to do guitar stuff over the top. Mm -hmm. And I've listened to all of the tracks and there's some, there's some cool stuff on it. So, you know, Bumblefoot. Little snapper. <laughs> Aye, that, that was quite a bit of insanity. It reminds me of Ron Yarzenbeck. I'm surprised he's not on it. Yeah. Um I don't even give that a listen. That sounds crazy. Yeah, there's some uh, some interesting stuff on here. And uh now you've turned that down. Right? Turn it back up. I won't be able to hear myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So like I say, there's some great players on there and uh keep an eye on it. Might be a cup of tea, might not be a cup of tea. But, uh, you know, all is worth considering, right? I'm definitely giving that a bash. That sounds crazy. Yeah. So let me, let's play this, right? Joe Bonamassa. This was sent to me by uh, Fred, I believe, on um, on my Discord server. Right. This was an email that he received from Joe Bonamassa. An email he received from Joe Bonamassa. The king of the boomers, if you like, are <laughs> in terms of marketing stuff, right? <laughs> so check this out. Wait, turn the volume up on this. Is that, that'll be okay, actually, won't it? Yeah. Uh, there's no no sound right. So this is this is the email. Like, check this out. So open your email from Joe oh, Bonamassa, webma webmaster at Joe Bonamassa, and 
I hope you guys are ready for just how big this email is. Imagine sending this. Look how long it is. Did you want to He's not even halfway. Or something? He's not even halfway. He's just reached the halfway point. What? It's like he's, you know, no, I don't think any artist should ever have this much merchandise in general. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? To have this much merchandise and to put the, <laughs> update your preferences, I describe complete, yeah. Um, that's just, a, it's, it was 300 pages. It was a three, and that's a catalogue. That's an absolute catalogue. But, you know, the reality of the situation is, this must work. That must generate sales. And it tells you a lot about the average Joe Bonamassa fan, I think. Yeah, 300 pages of not being able to read for images. Yeah. Buy our shit. Buy my stuff. It's terrible, man. Buy. What the fuck? There was everything in there. Every single product. That I, it must be his entire catalogue. And, and when I say catalogue for people that weren't viewing there, I don't mean album catalogue. I mean catalogue of merchandise. T-shirts. Ah, fucking, you know, every T-shirt imaginable. Polo shirts. Like... It was like a Littlewoods catalogue with Joe Bonamassa merch on everything. <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah. Um, I, I always say I respect the hustle of Joe Bonamassa. I respect what he's done for himself. But well, do you want this... better, though? Look, it's unlisted and it's had 13 views. Oh, sorry, that's the video, not the fucking actual email. Sorry. Yeah, no, this I'm is being, the... I'm being silly. <laughs> this is the video that Fred uploaded of the, of the thing. That is fucking mental. Yeah. Um, Joe... Come on, man! This can't be real. Why would you? Why would you do things like this? Do do better than this, sir. Um, but I'm going to use that as a kind of way to springboard into another gear whore. You know, the idea of like guys that will just put their name on absolutely anything. <laughs> Kerry King, have you seen that he's finally announced his new guitar brand? No, I don't think I have. Okay, so oh no, you did say me. Sorry, that's right. Kerry King is now with Dean Guitars. Dean Guitars and. Part of me wants to, you know what? I'm not actually even going to bring up the guitar and show you the guitar because I have no interest in a Dean guitar from Kerry King, a man that isn't with the band Slayer anymore. Slayer doesn't exist anymore, technically. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody that looks at a uh, uh, Kerry King Dean and thinks, you know what? I think I want to buy one of those. Um, I've got some magic beans to sell you. The reason we're running with this story is my good friends over at Premier Guitar posted this on their Twitter page. I posted the uh, the story of Kerry King. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll just bring it up so people can see it. And then I'll read it out. The Trash King himself has <laughs> broke out his signature model with Dean Guitars. That, single-handedly, is the most glorious typo I have ever seen. It's fair enough, man. It's pretty good. It doesn't beat a Susan album party for me. That I feel that was deliberate. That's a marketing uh, stroke of marketing genius. Maybe if it was <laughs> not Susan Boyle, I, I know what you mean. I do know what you. There is. I mean, I've thought that many times with that. Like, surely there's better ways to promote. But if that was a young up and coming guy at a PR company, I was like, trust me, if we do this, everybody will be talking about it. <laughs> they were, but not for the reasons you think. But at the same time, okay, fair enough. Let's say. Infamy over fame, isn't it? Yeah. I, um, who cares about Kerry King? You know what I mean, really? The Trash King. <laughs> the only guitar that has ever caught my eyes is Custom V. The old school one with the Kaler on it, the ESP. Never oh. knows I'm going to the bin. But it's got a Kaler on it. <laughs> I don't care, still cool. <laughs> yeah. Um... I, I mean, I just looked at this signature model, right? It, it, every part of it just wants to be a BC Rich. Why are you not with BC Rich anymore? but still having the same shape fucking guitar. And I mean, like, the headstock's even a fucking rip-off of the BC Rich. Yeah. Um, it's uh, absolute fucking nonsense. So um, I don't know why he did that, but... Because uh, he a fucking idiot. Is what it is. Can you, Jason Becker, can you tell us about this story, please? I certainly can. Three of Jason Becker's prized guitars are going up for auction. This was put up on the group two days ago. I'll just read this from Guitar World. Uh, so, his prototype PV numbers guitar in two Moradira Hurricanes, seen on the covers of Perpetual Burn and Cacophony Speed Metal Symphony, respectively, are going under the hammer. There's a really good video of him playing... Maybe one of Paganini's Caprices yeah, on the, that. Yeah, it's the white one. Yeah. yeah. 
That's a great video because yeah. he's torn even in it. It's ridiculous too. Yeah. Um. So three Jason Becker's prize electric guitars are headed for the auction block, put up for sale by live auctioneers. The trio is comprised of uh Becker's prototype PV Numbers guitar, which is probably his most famous guitar that anybody's ever seen. Um. Other than the blue Carvin, but. I still think that's probably more I don't prolific, know. isn't it? I, it's, it's a weird one, right? Because you're saying this, but I would argue this blue one, because this is the one that's on the cover of Perpetual Burn. Mm, okay, yeah. So um, it depends what people have watched. I, the blue one, you know, people... His most popular video has got to be him playing those Serana arpeggios, and that's on the blue carbon, so... Aye, that is the... Probably not. I love that uh, full video, because yeah. a bit of it, he's like, well, I'm not much of a tapper, and then he just rips out this <laughs> most ridiculous tap like you've ever seen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, featuring a bolt-on maple neck, 24 fret maple fretboard, hum sing hum pickup set and shallow double locking bridge system, the numbers guitar on offers the first prototype PV made for Becker and was used to record the songs River of Longing and End of the Beginning. The guitar was also played by the late Eddie Van Halen when Eddie visited Becker at home in 1996 and more recently by Polyphius Tim Henson during a live stream fundraiser for Becker who has suffered from ALS for over 30 years. The current bid for the guitar, which is an estimated value of fifty to one hundred thousand dollars is twenty four thousand dollars. That may have changed, so probably. Polyphius Tim Henson is a lucky wee bastard getting to play that actual guitar, isn't he? Yeah, uh, there's still twenty four thousand dollars on all of those. Yeah, all three of them. So next in the docket is the white Moradira Hurricane model Becker held on the cover of Speed Metal Symphony's first album with Cacophony is duo with Marty Friedman. Featuring a bolt-on maple neck, rosewood fretboard with 22 frets, HSH pickup set and Floyd Rose double lock and bridge system. The guitar was used to record almost all of Becker's seminal debut solo album Perpetual Burn. Also used extensively on his album The Blackberry Jams, the guitar is valued at fifty dollars to $100,000 and carries with it a minimum bid of 24000 And finally, there's the blue Moradira Hurricane that Becker is pictured holding on the cover of Perpetual Burn. Featuring a bolt on maple neck, maple fretboard, 24 frets, HSH pickup set, and a Floyd Rose double lock bridge system, the guitar was used on the piece. Betcha can't play this. Uh, like its companions at the auction, the guitar is valued at fifty to a hundred thousand dollars and remains at twenty four thousand dollars at the moment. Yep. All proceeds from the sale of the guitars, which can be bidded on through July uh, through to July fifteenth, will go to the Jason Becker Special Needs Trust, which helps Becker's family pay for the extensive costs of the guitarist's medical care. In addition to his decades-long battle with ALS, Becker was hospitalised in April after experiencing persistent shortness of breath and rapid heart rate following a bacterial infection. He later fully recovered and was sent home. The auction sorry, uh, follows an all-star fundraiser Twitch stream and an official reverb store that sold a series of stein, uh, signed six strings to raise funds for Becker. For more info on the auction, which also includes the red jacket Becker wore on the cover of Perpetual Burn, stop by Live Auctioneers. Yeah, uh, Paul Gilbert just recently uh, contributed a guitar to that, one of his nice. um, his 90th ham signature PGM, nice. which is, is the, the most beautiful PGM, the blue one. The blue one with, with the, the pink? White. No, no, the blue, the blue, it's uh, flame maple blue, white F-holes on it, binding all around it. It's got 25 frets, reverse headstock, stun, stunning. 25 guitar. frets? 25 frets on it, yeah. Um, really? Yeah. yeah. You'll take the pass. No, um, absolutely not. <laughs> um, this is interesting though right so I've always wanted a little bit more information on these Hurricane guitars mm -hmm. 4,000 bucks for the Jason Becker jacket I've always want a little bit more information on these Hurricane guitars because to me I imagine they would be more valuable than the uh, the PV guitar because they are you know the cacophony guitars mm -hmm. uh, if I bring these up though and we just take a look through the images for some of these guitars you know when I look at the, uh, the ooh, try that again when I look at the the numbers, it doesn't really do much for me. I don't really like this guitar. I've never really been into this guitar. Uh, but if we go back and look at these Hurricanes, the white one, this looks pretty standard. Okay, nothing on this looks looks off base. Okay, I have always just assumed that the I don't know much about Hurricane the brand, but I had always just assumed this was maybe some like small local luthier type thing, local guy that they knew um, who made this for Jason and and he quite liked it. Right. Mm -hmm. But this blue one, right, check this out. So as we go down the neck on this, mm -hmm. we go, okay, this is a fine looking guitar. You get down, you go, okay, fine, fine. Look at that routing around the bridge, right? That looks like a DIY job, doesn't it? Could be, eh? It looks like, uh, it doesn't look like high, craft, high quality craftsmanship, let's just put it no. that way. I think these are probably just guitars that were cheap enough that Jason liked. 
and could fuck with himself yeah. or have someone fuck with and still have the guitar that he liked neck profile etc um, I don't know anybody that would choose to put a fucking bridge on a guitar like that anyway it's disgusting looking <laughs> look at it yeah so uh, you know astonishing amount of my gut instinct when I saw these were for sale is oh I should try and work out a way that I could buy one of these and then I immediately saw oh okay 24 grand no probably not then <laughs> <laughs> hmm sleeping outside and having this nice guitar or having a house yeah. hmm don't think I'll be buying one of those, unfortunately. No, it's, but, um, it's cool as fuck, though, isn't it? Yeah, super cool, and um, he's going to keep it's, keep raising a lot of money. Still a bit sad, though, that Jason is selling equipment with such prevalence in his story to help with his medical funds, you know? Yeah. Pretty pretty sad in my mind. I'm seeing if I have access to this. Someone posted the, um, the, what? the Paul Gilbert guitar that was for sale. There it is. Oh, are you okay? Uh, that's a 90th ham, and this, uh, this is the 25th fret. I'm, I could be wrong on that one. It's either this one or the or the, the PGM 10th has a 25th fret on them. One of them has 25 frets, though. <laughs> right. Um, don't know why. It's yeah. pretty awkward, to be honest. Yeah. 25 frets, but... Yeah. Well. Wanted to do something special. Yeah, so. baby. I do love Paul Gilbert, to be fair. Yeah. Even though he has definitely turned out a, a super old man. Yeah. He's, uh, and stuff. he's a he's a maniac. I don't think it's actually appeared on the store yet. Let's just check the store. Uh yeah, it's not on the store yet. Though have you seen the prices for the other stuff they've got up? Ooh. You know, would somebody like to buy a signed and stage played uh Charvel Guthrie Govan signature guitar? Or a signed Ibanez LA LA Custom Shop Andy Timmons signature guitar? Thirty thousand pounds. <laughs> I'll take two. Oh, Oh. That's got to be would be very different. Getting on for fifty thousand uh, dollars. I probably not. I put the balls off that. Putting these at half the value of those original Jason Becker guitars is um, crazy. Yeah, I think the price is a little off on those. Um, but you know, <laughs> I think they're just trying to bump the price up because it'll be right. We've got X person has said this is a collector's item and sure. probably be worth X to the yeah, right yeah. person, and we're just got to try and get that because we want to sell these for good reasons. Yeah. So uh, uh, the majority of that value will be altruistic. Sure. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm I'm not against it. Um, I would just, but for me, I feel they're a little bit overpriced. Um, Speaking of overpriced, <laughs> so I see what you did there. Uh, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to bring it up. Let's listen to. Him. Hey, I'm Dave Mustaine, and I'd like to invite you to have me send a personalized greeting from Cameo for you to your friends. I can say happy birthday, happy anniversary, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, whatever. Or some of my personal favorites, like, fuck, no, I, we, won't, we won't get into that here. But I will tell you that if you do have me do a cameo for you, a portion of the proceeds will go to the charities that I support. I, I got so many things that I could say about this. And I'm sure I've said it on the show before. I hate the portion of the proceeds. Just tell us how much. Just tell us how much. When you say portion of the proceeds, you know that means it's so minuscule that it's not worth mentioning. Because otherwise you'd mention it. Aye. Aye. It's a, I don't believe that the number is significant enough to highlight. Yeah. But no, more important than that, right? Because any good is still good. Right? I don't care if he gives 1% of it. Sure. At least he's still doing something altruistic. Mention it maybe a bit wanky but again doesn't matter if that's meant to encourage people to do it for a good reason right but who the fuck's going to pay him money for a 240p video where he can't even get the shot right vertically fucking recorded where it sounds like he's talking for a different room hey guys it's Dave the stage here feel like 10 metres away well you know fuck what I'd off. say to that he should call up Dave Ellison and get some tips on how to record videos to send to people oh no, <laughs> no. um well, what I can say is fewer people are going to see Dave Mustaine's cameos than Dave Ellison wanking. <laughs> ah, okay, right, look, come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you just need to get them out there, don't you? Yeah, I do. Can't can't help it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to... Uh, he's 150 bucks for these for these cameo videos. Which Absolutely is, um, fuck right off. The only responsible answer to that. Absolutely. Away and bail your heat, you fucking lunatic. <laughs> Yeah. Why um, does he get two cabs with monitors on top of them and a lamp? Why? There's no amp head, which means he's maybe running a signal to them from a reamp box, but then to the monitors. 
but they're sitting next to an electrical a piece of electrical equipment that's probably no isolated, so he's going to get noise. <laughs> what is going on in your house, Dave? Have this, you lost it? This look is at the way gestures on noise. Look at him. He looks as if he's like just been bevying, and somebody's been like, "I'm going to record one of the videos for a laugh." I can say "Happy Birthday." I can say. Hanukkah, I can even be a metal guy and say, fuck you. Oh, no, I'm only joking. Oh, it's all right, pal. He sounds like Jakey. Yeah, yeah. When you did, I mean, I still, to this day, I think we could have retired the show when you did Dave Mustaine Needs 20p for the bus. I think that is the funniest thing that's ever happened on this show. Uh, this but... is like him recording a, a happy birthday to his wee niece because he's in a fucking retirement yeah. home and he's not allowed to do it and because yeah. of COVID. Like, I love him. I do love him. Um, and some, some people thought that that Dave Mustaine's 20p for the bus thing was a little in poor taste because they're like, you do know he had cancer, right? And it's like, well, yeah. Yeah, no, I, abs I absolutely do. Do you think that we're slagging him because he had cancer? Not, no, yeah, I don't exactly. think so. Not at all. He's a multimillionaire. He's trying to... What he's doing here is he's either trying to raise money for himself or he's trying to raise money for charity. You know, the cynic in me says for himself, but let's say he's just trying to raise money for charity. Let's just say it's Max Motive. Yeah. Both. Make a better fucking video than this. Dress up a little bit, you know? Put some lights on yourself. Neither of the guitars are actually in the shot properly. Uh, the cabs aren't centred. Yeah. The monitors aren't centred. It, it, it's clear that somebody else is recording it too because yeah. there's a voice at the very start of it and yeah. they can't even crop that out. Come on, fuck! You can't do this 150 quid for this? Yeah. Multi-millionaire, right? Not multi-millionaire. And look at how this podcast looks. Exactly. Yeah? You just... If you care, it shows. We care. I mean, I did send you the, the James Lebrie one that yes. was uh, an interesting watch. Anyway, the, the list is a bit better, to be yeah. honest. I don't know why I mentioned it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I do kind of like Cameo, but um, I feel like sometimes the prices are a little bit a little bit steep. And I think mm -hmm. 150 bucks to make a 30-second video is um, definitely, definitely on the steep side, Dave. So, um, hmm. yeah, okay, let's do the Elvis Costello story. I do like this one. I don't know how you feel about it. I like it. No, I do like it. Um, th sorry. sorry. I um, I can't think of a single Elvis Costello song. I find this with a lot of um, uh, a lot of music. He's like the most famous musician you don't know any of his music <laughs> of. And he? Because like, I'm the same. You just put me right in the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't care, though, because that's a... Good guy, Elvis Costello, yes, yeah. in, in this regard. Yeah. So for anybody that hasn't been really following any music news, and this is your first glimpse in, there is a young musician by the name of Olivia Rodrigo, and she has went fairly viral. Her album is almost somewhere kind of between Bikini Kill, Feminist Rock, and Pop Music. Pretty banging, to be honest. I really like it. Um, and recently, she's came under fire by people who've been saying essentially that she's stole one of Elvis Costello's songs. So... Allegedly, she's plagiarised Costello's 1978 song, Pump It Up. Don't know it. <laughs> by and the riff from her most recent song that's up in the charts called Brutal, um, is where it was taken from. So, this has obviously been getting thrown about and blah, 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 and it'll be on Twitter and... You know what it's like in the social media, especially when it's like a young woman and then there's like a man who's been respected for a long time. It's always like, stolen! No way you come up with yourself! Right? But everybody has to take influence from somewhere. Yeah. And this is where Elvis Costello just comes in like a boss. Like, that, with his big semi hollow and his big geeky glasses, and you think he's <laughs> going to be an arse, and he goes, fuck up, mate. He's, so he's replied to someone on Twitter giving her shit. No shit. First song on the album is pretty much a direct lift from Elvis Costello. Elvis just replied, this is fine by me, Billy. That's how rock and roll works. You take the broken pieces of another thrill and make a brand new toy. That's what I did. Somebody that recognises that rock and roll literally is just plagiarism. Sure. And repeat. Well. And infinitum. Yeah. So I. Um, it's difficult for me to make too much comment on this without having, you know, listened to the songs. Mm -hmm. um, and I chose to not do that. In That's this, fair in enough. In this case, because I think we're talking more about attitudes here. Mm -hmm. Like, we like Elvis Costello's attitude here. Um, they could be really close to each other. They could be miles apart from each other. Uh, maybe if it was a if it was a literal direct lift, maybe he would have taken a different attitude. Maybe, maybe not. But I, I certainly do like, uh, I do like this response. The th thing that kind of irked me about this is the uh, this is posted by PaperMag.com. Mm -hmm. It's the virtuousness of um, of PaperMag. The only thing on here that really bugged me is how they describe the chap that made the uh, that made this this comment, and that was uh, a gatekeeping troll. 
And that's that's a bit much. That's a bit it? of a reach. Aye, aye, okay. That's uh, not gatekeeping, now, and it's not trolling. <laughs> let, let, let me just be uh, fairly clear. I didn't pick this uh, source of the story because I thought it was the best source. Mm-hmm. It's because it's the one that I saw and I'd heard the story. Yeah, no, totally. And I was like, totally. fuck it, I'll throw that in, and it's at least the, the conversation starter. Yeah. You're right. But a lot of the but time right. when we talk about a story, we often criticise the journalism. So, like, Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're pretty bad people all around, aren't we? Yeah, it's like we uh, sometimes we go out of our way to find the worst possible source so we can make fun of the writer. <laughs> yeah, we definitely do go on Metal Sucks quite a lot. That is true. That is true. Not a single story today from Metal Sucks, though, which is nice. That's why we're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, we didn't look, so maybe if we looked, maybe there was more. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't uh, I don't know anything about this. Uh, that this was artist. the other one. Courtney Love Sorry. gave her shit because one of the photos she took was her dressed up like a prom queen crying. Right. And Courtney Love took great uh, umbrage to this because uh, it was a bit like one of her covers. A prom queen crying. Yeah, pretty much. What, a, as if what an original idea! I know. Like so, you uh, want to bring it up for people. Spot the difference was the way she put it. Ah, if you can do it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the 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 Courtney Love. I thought it was on there that you could swap between them. Maybe no. Oh, who cares, man? It's Courtney Love. Any excuse for being an asshole in it? Yeah. Uh, nah. Nah, it's not showing. Fine. But it's it's a it's a fucking prom queen like crying like it's hardly an original idea. But you know, Courtney Love, she's got to find whatever she can to remain relevant. <laughs> and then garbage just jumped in there in the comments. Did yeah. you see that? Yeah. You did it best, babe. All wasn't forever. Yeah. Fuck up. People can do what they want. Yeah. And people are going to do similar things to you. I agree. Or than you, or like you, similar things. Absolute mints. Absolute nonsense. And get this stuff in the bin. Speaking of mints, by the way, here we go. Or well, this one. Yes. Yeah. Spotify executive calls artist entitled for requesting payment of one penny per stream. This is uh so I I saw this title. I was actually sent this by somebody. I thought it was inflammatory enough that I knew that we'd talk about it and we'd go into a lot of depth on it. Uh wow. but I want to start by by imagining where my where my cards are going to lay on this, right? Mm-hmm. Because we've talked about it before. The idea of asking for a penny per stream is ludicrous. In terms of the financial viability of it, mm-hmm. anybody that thinks that you you could sustain the business on a penny per stream, they're not entitled. They're just not business minded. They just don't understand numbers and how things scale, right? So maybe the criticism that the Spotify executive goes with here is on point, but going with entitled. People don't ask for a penny per stream because they're entitled. They ask for a penny per stream because that seems reasonable based on how much money music used to make. I don't even think it's that. Can I can I give you my sure. wild card? Yeah, go for opinion it. On it. I think this is them making a point. Because as you say, asking for a penny per stream is ludicrous based on the figures. Why is that? Because it's been priced incorrectly and that convenience is now yes. way more important than cost. If that's the case, then... It's the business model that's the problem, yeah, yeah. not an artist putting a value sure. on their, their stuff. And I think this is maybe just a, a a sneaky way of highlighting the conversation of yeah. why are you undervaluing my work and then profiting on it? Well, we did, um, when we talked about this before, mm-hmm. I, I agreed with you on that and said that um, in order for that to work, you would have to charge more for the product. Of course. And then, and then we said, you know, we just know that most people won't charge, uh, sorry, most people won't pay more for the product because... Most people won't even pay £10 a month for Spotify. Exactly. Like more than half of the users of Spotify don't pay for it. Um, and I was surprised that you turned around, because I remember it, you said that you'd pay more for to, to have access to streaming music, which is, that's, you know, we need more people like that in the world. I think it depends on the value and how much you use it. I value it because I listen to music all the time. Sure. But maybe I also have another part of value in it in my mind because I know what the price and value are two different things. And that I know that I'm like, you should never download music and you should definitely support all the bands you want. Like, do your best. Not everybody's got money. It doesn't sure. mean you should be gatekept from actually having entertainment. But there's a different argument for that than I just don't see the value in paying X to support musicians or whatever. See if it was like a band started a streaming service and other bands signed on it and it was literally a, we're not taking any profit, we'll, we'll cover the cost of the servers and everything yeah. else goes out to bands. And even if it was only slightly more lucrative for bands than Spotify, I would much prefer that because then it's actually putting money in people's hands yes. than it being filtered through a, well, we'll take this amount 
and then we set the value on your music. Yep. But okay, to me, it's not quite the same thing, but it almost falls in lines with the, in line with the scalping discussion. In the in the scalping thing, what's happening there is is people are trying to work out what the value of something is, what the market mm-hmm. value is, and what people are willing to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And I feel that there are there are services that I subscribe to that I no longer subscribe to because I looked at the value that I was getting for what I was paying and I wasn't happy with it. Or they went to put their prices up and that made me consider whether or not I was getting the value out of it that I wanted to mm-hmm. um, and then unsubscribe. So uh, I'm sure I said this on the show before, but I'm like three months free of Netflix now. Um, and I might go back to Netflix, but that only happened because they put their prices up and it wasn't like a, a protest thing. I just really had to let them go, is it worth that? No, I don't think it is. Are you watching it on it? Maybe I, one season? Yeah. Like you're going to buy the season elsewhere yeah. for the yeah, same yeah. money? I don't think Spotify have put their prices up for of if they have it's not been for a very very long time um if spotify put their prices up i would absolutely continue to use spotify that that's value that you're talking about yeah. as well so i think the difference would be how often are you listening to music on that platform and how convenient is it yep and that's that's what it comes down to it's just got to so it's it, that everything now is convenience yep. how how do i get things the quickest the easiest way the, the most i can get like the, the widest variety the most portable and that's just how netflix and how amazon uh prime video yeah and how spotify uh, that's how they're all surviving yeah it is but uh, again it undervalues i mean sp- specifically musicians it'd be di- i think it'd be totally different if the money was going to artists in the same way that money goes to creators of shows on netflix see in that regard yeah and having like Netflix exclusive TV shows. What if there was net uh, Spotify exclusive albums, but then they were paid for with a lump sum in advance to the band? Yep. I, I would think that would be potentially a good way. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm kind of surprised that they've never never gone down that route. To be completely honest with you, because mm-hmm. there's they they essentially have done it with podcasts. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll give you a fuck ton of money to be exclusive on our platform. Um, I I imagine that the reason they they might not have done that. Is just the the policing that then goes in in hand in hand with the album getting uploaded to Spotify and then people ripping it from Spotify and mm-hmm. uploading it elsewhere and it might pose a bit of a nightmare. But I I think you're you're probably right. There's a lot of potential um, in that as an idea. Anyway, should we read this? Should we read this article? Yes, this was posted four or five days ago. Because we may both be off base on our assessment of this. We'll see. Mm, we'll probably see. not <laughs> we've been covering artist efforts to increase their Spotify streaming royalties including demands to pay one penny per stream now we're getting a better sense of how Spotify really feels about this Ashley Jana is like a lot of independent artists struggling to make money from streaming platforms she has a few million streams on Spotify but draws very little from those plays thanks to an extremely low per stream royalty rate well Apple Music recently upped its per stream royalty payout to one penny per stream Spotify's per stream rate remains a fraction of that at last count, Spotify's per stream payouts were hovering between 0.003 and 0.005 cents to the dollar, which is at best one half of what ha- Apple pays, but usually far lower according to our data. So why isn't Spotify paying more? Ashley Jana presented that question to Jim Anderson, who is credited with architecting and even inventing the Spotify platform at a music industry conference in New York. Anderson was a keynote interview at the Sync Summit New York where he was lauded as the man who built out the system architecture of Spotify. But that build out didn't seem to include much consideration for artist payments, which Anderson made exceedingly clear. (laughs) Excuse me. The problem was to distribute music, not to give you money, okay? At the end of the interview, Ashley Jana bluntly asked Anderson why Spotify doesn't pay more, specifically suggesting a rate of one penny per stream. She also recorded the conversation. Incidentally, this all went down in 2019, though Jana said she held on to the recording for more than a year because she feared industry retribution. In response to the question, Anderson repeatedly berated Jana for being entitled, which, while explaining that Spotify has no obligation to solve the issue of artist compensation. Do you guys want to talk about entitlement now? Anderson asked the audience and moderator after repeatedly using entitlement to characterise the question presented by Jana. Uh, then... Anderson declared that Spotify was never created to make artists money, while criticising demands for exactly that. I think Taylor Swift doesn't need 0.0001 more of a a stream, Anderson stated, referring to public demands for Swift for better Spotify compensation for artists. The problem is this, Spotify was created to solve a problem. The problem was this, piracy and music distribution. The problem was to get artist music out there. 
The problem was not to pay people money. Well, that's just a misunderstanding of the value of what you're trying <laughs> to put out there then. Yeah, this is a is a really bad take. Um, it really it's, isn't. It's it? hard to describe it as a take because this is somebody from the company. Um, but I do agree with the notion that Spotify was created to solve a problem. Right, no bother. McDonald's was created to solve the problem of selling cheeseburgers. We don't need to pay our suppliers, though. But you, you want £20 for a fucking box of hamburgers? Are you going to point point three pence? Well, that's the point, right? So I agree with the idea that Spotify was created to solve a problem because we do all acknowledge that there was a problem with piracy and music distribution. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem was that they couldn't make money from it. But the yeah, the exactly the assessment to then go the problem was to get artists' music out there. No, it wasn't. M artists could already get their music out there via piracy. Their music was out there via piracy, and the reason artists had prob had a problem with that is because they didn't make money. So to make the assessment of the problem was not to pay people money, absolutely fucking was. And if your motivation for, sol for solving this problem wasn't that, then you weren't solving a problem that people were asking to have solved. So what you're saying is you just wanted to charge people for piracy. <laughs> you wanted to give the exact same system but make money from it. Ah, it's like we are happy to get. We want to put that music in in your hands super super easily, but not to pay for it ourselves. We want to make the money off it because we are delivering it, but we're not actually looking to compensate the people who actually ha own the IP. Yeah, people could distribute before and, and piracy it wasn't really that big a deal to be honest. I think most bands had actually turned to social media by that point and could self distribute across free plays on fucking MySpace, Bebo. Yeah. Bandcamp, big cartel, whatever you know what I mean. Like th there is a network there for bands to go independent, and Spotify wasn't there to solve a problem. Spotify was there to monopolize a problem. They saw a gap in the market. People want convenience when it comes to music. We can give them that music in a convenient way. How do we make it worth it for ourselves? And then totally disregarded the fact that it's built off the back of the art of other people, yeah. the labour of other people the cost and expense of other people, the years of tenure, of practising, of honing their sound, getting equipment, choosing the right producers, practising, hiring rooms, all that stuff, no value, none. Yeah. Oh man, we're in the process of, of sorting, uh, trying to get some funding for Melissa's next album at the moment, some Arts Council funding, Creative mm -hmm. Scotland funding uh, for the album. The reason that we're looking to do that is because she spent £16,000 of her own money out of pocket. She put herself £16,000 in debt to make the first album. Um, that is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. There's a lot of money. And that album could have sounded a lot better as well. Like she did what she could with the money that she had. Um, and she's now looking to make an album for less money than that because she, she won't get that sort of money in funding. Mm -hmm. um, she's looking to make make the album for less money than that. But she has to because album she's not going to make money on it you know in terms of releasing it on on social media or, or you know in settings like this spotify or what have you the only way the album will make money for her is from and i hate to be the one to to say this because i don't actually think it's a good defense uh for, for spotify is because I, I think the consumer picks this up and then doesn't feel bad for stealing your music or that you don't make money they just say well go out on the road and make money but the point is for melissa like that will literally be the only way she'll be able to make any money off the album but then, if that's the case, what's the point in the album? Mm -hmm. Literally, you don't don't need it. Just let's just go out, play gigs, and I'll make money on PRS. It's hard going, man. It really yeah. is. Do you want me to read this out? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So there's a detailed back and forth between Ashley Jana, Jim Anderson, and the interviewer and Sync Summit CEO Mark Freezer. A clip of the recording is also below. Um, do you want to play the clip, or do you think we'll get done for it? Uh, I wouldn't want to risk it. No, nah, cool, that's fine. So, Ashley Jana. Hi, you're awesome for what you've created, and I can't believe you're here because I've been thinking about you for a while. I'm an artist, and I'm not begging you or asking you to do anything. I'm just asking you to consider something. The idea of having a $10 a month service plus one cent per song. It would make people so much more money, and everybody is really broke. Jim Anderson, more money? Jana, well, the artists are really broke. Audience member, we need more money. Jana, we're not making any money off the streams. And I know that you know this, and I'm not trying to put you in the spot. I'm just saying one cent is really not even that much money if you add two million times 0 0.01, and it's still not that much. And if you just consider, Anderson, oh, I'm not going to go down this road, you know that. Hey, sorry, oh, I'm going to go down this road, you know that. Interviewer Mark Freezer, this is really not a road we've talked about before, but I'm going to let him do this. Jana, thank you again. Anderson, do you want me to go down this road? I'm going to go down this road. Freezer, well, if you need to. Anderson, wait, do I go down the entitlement road now, or do I wait a minute? Hmm. Freezer, well, you know what? I think you should do what you need to do. Anderson, should we do it now? Freezer, yeah, whatever you feel you need to do. This is fucking stupid. Yeah, well, so he's he's 
he's trying, uh, he's trying to reach to... out to the Freezer character to try and get Freezer to shut him down. Uh, of course he has. Yeah. Oh, oh, so we're doing this. We're doing it then. Yeah. Oh, hype me up. Yeah. Shut up. Uh, so we'll skip the, the continuum. Sure, I'm yeah. going to do this. I'm going to do this. Jana says, I don't think it's entitlement to ask for normal rates like before. Anderson, normal rates? Jana says, no. The idea is to make a win-win situation for all parties. Anderson, okay, okay. So we should talk about entitlement. I mean, I have an issue with Taylor Swift's comments. I have this issue with it. And we'll call it entitlement. I mean, I consider myself an artist because I'm an inventor, okay? Now, I freely give away my patents for nothing. I never collect royalties on anything. I think Taylor Swift doesn't need 0. 0.0001 more a stream. The problem is this. Spotify was created to solve a problem. The problem was this. Piracy and music distribution. The problem was to get artist music out there. The problem was not to pay people money. Jana, but now it's a problem. It's a problem now. Anderson. The problem, the problem is to distribute music, not to give you money, okay? The problem is to distribute music. We didn't make the label deals. I mean, those those aren't our problems. Jana, but people would pay one cent, or but people would pay one cent a song. It's literally one cent. Anderson, right, but you don't understand. The deal is this, you ready? If the infrastructure doesn't work, that's not my issue. This world that we live in is built on entitlement. Right now, today, everybody here in this younger world here, everybody seems to think about entitlement. Uh, Jana, it's not the same. Anderson, what do you mean it's not the same? Jana, entitlement's when you want more than is normal. Anderson, correct. Jana, we're getting way less than is normal. Anderson, what do you think is considered the norm right now? Jana, when you were young, that was the norm. People made money off of selling songs that they worked really hard on for selling or for a really long time, and now we're giving it away for free. Later on in the discussion, Jana also said, it's just about compassion. It's about win-win situations. The best business deals are win-win, and there's you solved a problem, but now there's another one. And I'm not saying you're here, I'm here, and I'm not trying to attack whatever you're doing, but I'm going to agree. Eh, I'm not going to agree with you and say that musicians are entitled because they don't want to be flat broke. Yeah. So what a uh, wanker! Yeah, he does come across as a massive, massive asshole. Hundred. Um, you're all entitled because you think that I give away my patents for free. Cool. Did you get paid a lot of money for actually creating that site? <laughs> or you you got paid for that, right? Cool. Well, guess what? The chances are that Jana went out and actually did put her own money into that recording for you then to go. I don't give a fuck about your value as long as the company's making money and I already got my money out of it, so... Yeah, yeah uh, and I bet this guy's worth a lot of fucking money. What an absolute prick. Um, absolute prick. I, yeah, so entitlement is just is just wrong. It's not the right word for what she's talking about here. Um, I, I do, and I will, I will go to bat on this one time and time again. A cent per stream, I just don't think it's, it's viable. Um... I just don't think it's volume because she's she's got millions of streams. I've never heard of her. What I, what I think she's saying is that you pay ten dollars and then you pay a cent for each stream. Oh, so uh, right, I and see. that goes straight to the artist. I I so the idea that's would my be, guess of what she's talking about. Sure, I mean, it's an interesting idea, and it would be interesting to know whether or not the consumer would be okay with that. I think paying a dollar or a pound for a hundred streams is more than reasonable because the chances are. Even you or I yeah. won't break 200 streams a month. Um, well, or maybe actually, depending on what we're doing. Yeah. But come on, a thousand fucking streams is another £10. Does that sound unfair? And then if everybody's paying that wee extra cent or two and then the artists get it? That, if I'm that, going to completely agree with you. If that is what they're selling, I will happily pay my Spotify plus. Happily. Yeah, that's... um. That is the solution... That doesn't even need any effort to be put in place. Sure. None so, whatsoever. Yeah, if you're right on your assessment of what she's saying there, that idea of it being 10 bucks and then uh, the consumer is then essentially has an account with Spotify that tracks your streams and each time you stream a track, you get billed another one cent. Mm hmm. That'd be very easy to do. It already tracks your analytics of what you've listened to, yeah. how often, when, whether you liked it or not. That's a really interesting notion. Can you scroll up a wee tiny sure, bit? Just yeah. to confirm that I'm getting the right idea, because she said something, having yeah, a $10 yeah. a month service plus one cent per song. Yeah, so I think your assessment on that is probably probably right. I'm not going to be in the chat because I'm at work, but those of you that are in the chat, let me know what you think, because I've never heard it phrased that way. Sure. But the context that's been given in by Ashley here, in my mind, is 100% bang on the, the point. Yeah. If... And would the question is, would you pay the the fee to have access to the library and then your one cent per song stream rate if only if that penny entirely goes to the artist? 
Yeah, that's that's really interesting. What would be the most interesting thing is if I could go on my Spotify and see, like just now, if I could see how many tracks I've streamed this month, because obviously uh, this only works if you if you are informed beforehand how much you're likely to to be to be spending. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm no, I'm I'm fully for that actually. I am I cannot criticize it as an idea. It might be a pain in the ass to implement, but you've clearly got an arrogant motherfucker here that likes to brag about the you know, the, the infrastructure that he's created. Like, you know, you're clearly a smart guy. You clearly think you're even smarter than you actually are. Um, I'm sure you could probably put this together, big brain man. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's a great idea. It's a great, great idea. I'm actually speechless at how good an idea is that, that is because usually when artists talk about wanting to make more money from Spotify, they they are talking about why don't you just pay us more royalties? And it's like, because the it's not scalable. But that is scalable. Taking a penny per stream from the customer straight to the artist is definitely scalable. Yeah. You're paying your £10 because that gives you the infrastructure for the streaming site. And that clearly as a model makes money. Not yeah. as if Daniel Ek, etc. don't have money. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, you've still got all the convenience. It's not taking anything off you. You've still got access to all the same amount of tracks you had before. So it's not changing the value you're getting. But then you just pay... Your one cent per stream. I'm just seeing if there's any information on what the average amount of um, streaming that people tend to tend to do per month. Uh, got a, one billion streams a day, twenty five million users. It'd be thirteen streams per account per day, or uh, fifty streams per premium account per day. So, thirteen or fifty cents a day. Hmm. And if you are paying for a premium account. You're really going to be that bothered about your 50 streams per day? And that's obviously averages. I can imagine there will be Spotify accounts that are being used left, right and centre across businesses where they don't have a PRS licence and whatever else. So they'll not be paying properly. It does start to add up. You know, if I was paying 50 cents a day, that's an, an additional 15 bucks a month. I'd be happy to pay 25 bucks a month for access to all of my music. And I feel good knowing that I was then... Um, add into the to the musician's pocket. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to take my cap off to this suggestion and go, congratulations, you've solved the... the and it, people think I'm going to be... I'm being facetious when I no, say No, no, it's a simple like, solution. That you've solved you solved the the great problem. But I, I honestly cannot see a flaw with that. It's elegant. If if there is a flaw with that, it's that consumers are too greedy and they want too much. And if that is the case... I don't think the that's case, the consumer's fault. I think that's the business's fault for undervaluing musicians and still providing the service. But, but, you've already shown that there's, there doesn't have to be a value for you to get that... No, but I would agree with you if piracy hadn't been so prevalent first. You know, that my entire family outside of me, mm -hmm. you could argue to the death with them as to why they should pay for anything for music. Mm -hmm. And we know it to be the case as well because more than half of Spotify users don't pay for Spotify. So um, my family are like that. But my mum thinks I'm stupid when I ask for her why won't she pay for music or when I used to um, ask her questions like that because she's like, but why would I pay for something that I can just get for free? And it's it's just such a there's no arguing with that mindset. She firmly believes that, mm -hmm. she's, and she's right. Why would she pay for something that she can get for free, a aside from fucking morals? You know, um, I'll, I'll I'll tell you why. Because it's now at the stage where I would guarantee your mum is not going to go out and try and find a torrent for an album, versus just having a Spotify account. The convenience has overtaken the yeah. cost, and again, the big part of that in my mind is that platforms like spotify have undervalued or essentially nullified the value of the artist's contribution to sure. the business model without that there is no business model and yet they're always the bottom rung i'm extremely impressed with this i really like this and i think that more artists most people that are pushing for change in the industry should be looking into this mm -hmm. and pushing this because maybe every single time somebody has talked about wanting one cent per stream, maybe this is what they've meant. But they've just not been eloquent enough to put it into words, you know? I don't even think it's been that. I think they've just seen the money that goes through and been like, right, because we're all guilty of thinking one penny, one cent means nothing. But when you take the size of a building like that, a building, not a building, sorry, a business like that and the money that runs through it, it might seem like it's absolutely fuck all. Yeah. But it... Like you said, if you look at the figures, it, it isn't viable without taking more money from the consumer. Right, sound? Take a cent or a penny off the consumer and pass it straight to the artist. Yeah. That's um easy as fuck. 
yeah, I'm super happy with this. Uh, and I think that was a really interesting and productive discussion. I'm going to send Ashley a wee message now and Good. see if we can get uh, some input and comments from her because bravo, Ashley. I really enjoyed that. Good on you, Hen. And uh, fuck the Spotify inventor guy, whatever his name was, yeah. Anderson. Prick. Okay, cool. Did you know? This show is brought to you by our friends over at Ormsby Guitars. We want to remind you guys that there is still time to get involved in the upcoming Run 16 guitars. Those include these incredible hypes available in five new colours. That Dragon Burst is absolutely stunning. You can also get your hands on one of the Metal X's, again available in a range of finishes. My personal pick has to be these Headless Vs. Absolutely outrageously cool. Imagine one of those in an 8-string. I absolutely love these. And finally, the Ando San Signature Model, available in 6, 7, and 8-string availability. Go and check them out at Ormsby's website right now. This show is also brought to you by our friends over at Rev Amplification, a one-stop shop for all of your tonal needs. Head on over to their website to check out their range of lunchbox amplifiers, both the D20 and G20, 20 watt amplifiers with built-in two notes torpedo technology so you can record direct into your computer. If that doesn't suit, you can also check out one of their highly popular G2, 3 and 4 pedals, giving you that trademark Rev tone in a stomp box. Incredible tones, I use these myself. And finally, you may notice in the back of these videos a Rev Generator 120, an absolute masterclass in modern electric guitar tones. Check it out at their site now. So, as always, a huge thank you to our friends and family over at Ormsby Guitars, Rev Amplification, and our new friends, well, my friends at VPix, and mm -hmm. now Probably Mike's friends at VPix. <laughs> yes. All right, thanks once again. That's really cool. Yeah. Good. And good. All, as always, a shout out to Dan. Love you, Dan. Yes. Love you too, Kate. Good old audio. Send me more toys, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got mines coming next week. Um, Honestly, can't wait. Sweet. Yeah, I'm looking forward to looking forward to playing that. I mean, talking of looking forward to playing things, I'm about to move that rev over there, and we're gonna film a bonus episode where we try that out. So, um, yeah, please do go and check us out and buy me a coffee. And if you want to hear what this rev sounds like, as well as get two more bonus episodes of me learning some of Mike's stuff, Mike learning some of my stuff, and uh, having a good time. Anything? Any closing messages you'd like to give to the guys? Just the usual. Thanks very much for always showing up and showing us a bit of support and the kind messages that I've had as well I know I've missed Monday Night Guitar Geek Club the last couple of weeks because of work it's been a bit yeah, of a yeah. pain in the ass but swings and roundabouts you, know, sure. you can't win them all unfortunately um, I think I should be with you as of next week I'm pretty sure I'm off next Monday well, fingers crossed I can come and join you and come and say hello and we can get a good chat um, oops, I need to cough <laughs> <coughs> I've been, I said to Levi before I came down here, like I've got a really bad cough and I've not coughed the full episode. And then as soon as I go to speak, ready for it. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking like uh, after you were here for 10 minutes, I was like, he's banning me up about this cold. He's fine. <laughs> I'm a bit better today, man. Yesterday I was snottered. Like it was, my nose wouldn't even run and it was blocked. I yeah. took decongestants for most of the day and I only managed to breathe about nine o'clock at night. Right. So I, I think the stuffiness, is, eh, the, the clamminess is, isn't helping either. My eyes feel quite heavy. I actually think I might be getting hay fever, <laughs> which is fucking annoying as anything, man. It's yeah. been really annoying the last couple of days. Anyway, I would like to say thanks very much to everybody. Thank you for checking out Monday Night Guitar Geek Club. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, call us pricks, tag other people in that you want to have part of the conversation. I'm genuinely really interested to see what other people think about for the uh, 10 bucks plus one, one yeah. penny. Because yeah. I think I would, I would think the majority of music fans, maybe we've got a bit of a biased group given that we're all fairly music and music business focused and positive. Um, so that could be a not a wide enough uh, selection yep. for the, uh, the for the, the control group if we're going to pretend it's some sort of fucking social experiment. But I genuinely think this is a way forward. Yeah. Um, aye, thanks very much for tuning in. And uh, hopefully I'm in better spirits next time you see me and I'm a uh, better chat too. Uh, I think you've been great today and I've enjoyed oh, the thanks, show babe. so thank you very much, very much for tuning in guys and uh, we will see you for another one soon Mike until next time look after yourselves <laughs>